Have you ever written this kind of code while trying to get your algorithm to work for leak code practice or for real interviews? All these flags and all of these exit conditions can make your code go easily wrong. In this video, we're going to explain why and how we can fix this kind of code. You watch every single coding video. Your YouTube homepage is filled with motivational tech videos, and you have read every single coding interview book. You can do all of these things, but at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything unless you unshackle yourself. Unless you strengthen your fundamentals and learn this simple way of writing code, you will never impress your interviewer or your peers at work. If you continue to write code like this and never improve your style, you can wave goodbye to that six-figure fang salary. In this video, we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts in writing code. First, let's talk about basic control flow. Well, the control flow is the order in which the computer executes the statements in a script. So in other words, it's how we choose to design or write our code so that when it runs, it runs as efficiently as possible and is easily understandable by other human readers. Within a routine, basic and advanced control structures allow virtually any control flow. But why is this important? In my experience, I've gotten stuck in multiple loops while implementing complex algorithms and all due to the fact of not using control structures properly. But let's start off with the basics. First off, for predicate logic only, while and for loops are basically interchangeable. But the only difference is that for allows adding or removing loop index for debugging, so this is really powerful. But on that note, do not use a while loop to simulate a for loop. So instead of writing this inti is equal to zero and all this while loop stuff, just use a simple for loop. You might be thinking, hey, this is kind of idiotic. I've never seen anyone try to do this before. Really? Here's an example. Here is the solution to the longest substring without repeating characters. As you can see, we have an int r is equal to zero while r is less than n. And then at the end of this while loop, we have increase r by one. But what's the point of this? We actually see that it's exactly just like a for loop. So why don't we actually just write it as a for loop? So as you can see here, we've shortened down the code and possibly made it even more readable. Really quickly, let's talk about multi-exit loops or what they're called as mid-test loops. These kind of loops have one or more exit locations occurring within the body of the loop, not just the top, for example, a while, or at the bottom, for example, a do while. In this case, we may check the condition to exit multiple times throughout the body. Next, instead of taking input, checking the condition, then taking input again at the end of the loop, instead what we could do is we can just put our input inside an infinite loop and check the condition to break inside right after. This is going to eliminate priming, which is also duplicate code necessary for the while loop. Despite multi-exit loops being extremely useful, please, for the love of God, do not use multi-exit to simulate while or for loops, especially for for loop indexes. So instead of writing it like this, please just be normal and write it like this. Please, please, please. But these have all been pretty easy. So what about this piece of code? Do you see anything wrong with it? That's right. A loop exit never needs an else clause. So you see the break statement? We don't need to put that in an else because S2, the statement two, is logically part of the loop body, not part of the if statement itself. Similarly, for this piece of code, instead of writing if condition one, break, and then otherwise run S2, what we could do is say if condition one, then just break, and then have statement two as a part of the loop body. Now look at this piece of code here. Isn't it pretty confusing? Like how exactly am I supposed to go through the flow of this if I'm debugging it? A common solution to this problem is just to allow multiple exit conditions. So this way we can eliminate flag variables used solely to affect the control flow. So in other words, these flag variables don't contain any data associated with any of the computations required. But these are all pretty basic. So let's talk about static multi-level exit. What exactly is a static multi-level exit? Well, it's basically a type of control flow that exits multiple control structures where the exit point is known at compile time. And that's exactly why we call it static. One way we could actually implement this is by using labeled exits, such as break or continue. And these kind of implementations provide this capability of static multi-level exits. For example, here in Java, we can see that we have labeled our exits L1, L2, and L3. So if we wanted to exit L1 block, we can exit that. And if we wanted to exit the switch, we could exit using break L2. And if we wanted to exit the loop, we could say break L3. Now, what about in C or C++? Well, what we could do is use go to methods. So for example, if we wanted to break out of the entire block, we could say go to L1. 
What about the switch case? We could say go to L2. And for the loop, we can say go to L3. So in this case, we're using a lot of label for exits. But why is it good practice to label all of our exits? Well, this way we can eliminate all flag variables within a multi-level exit. So in this example, instead of writing all these boolean flag one and boolean flag twos, and then having a bunch of conditions to break out of them, we could basically just use these multi-exit loops using these labels here. For example, if I wanted to break out of the index i4 loop, I could basically just say if condition break b1, and if I wanted to break out of the b2 or the j4 loop, I can just say if condition break b2. Now back to the idea of code duplication. You can see in this case, we have an if statement nested within an if statement nested within an if statement. And for each if statement, we have an else clause that runs S4. But why do this when we could just use a label? Once all of the if statements have run successfully, we can just break out of the code block C. And then if it doesn't work, we'll end up running S4 anyway. Alternatively, what we could do is just use a go to statement. So if we don't want to run S4, we could skip S4 by going all the way to C but obviously this isn't as clean as the first one. That's pretty much it for this video. These are some extreme cases for what to do and what not to do in terms of control flow. But obviously, if you end up using some of the styles shown in this video, you're going to end up impressing your interviewer and your colleagues at work. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below on the best control flow practices you've seen while coding. And finally, check out the Algo Monster website to master the coding interview without the endless grind.